you doing? Um, it's Eddie from Menelite Radio. We're doing an interview with uh, Daryl Scott. Um, we are here in Colorado. We just thought you could share with us about, um, I don't know exactly um, what Rachel's challenge is and you know what it's been to you or the chain reaction that you've seen and different things. Well, thank you for coming up here, Teddy. It's great to meet you and hear your story. Uh, and I'm so glad that my daughter impacted your life because her life has impacted millions of lives and I never get tired of hearing the stories. Uh, Rachel's challenge was not something that I ever sat down and planned to do. You know, it, it's a school program that reaches around two million students every year, between one and a half and two million students every year. And we see amazing things happen with uh, her story touching the lives and hearts of kids. We see gang members take off their colors. We see about 150 suicides a year prevented. And uh, we have around 30 to 40 young people that travel all over the world and share her story with in high school assemblies, auditoriums. They also uh, do trainings. We have a number of different types of programs. And in those meetings, we will, we will see kids. We see little miracles take place all the time. We see kids who are autistic that have not said a word in four years, just open up and start talking. We see kids that are very shy, uh, become outgoing. I mean, it's almost like their personality changes. And it's because the story has touched their heart at a very deep level. And so over the years, we've, uh, we have some great partners with Rachel's Challenge. We partner with the Cal Ripken Jr. Foundation, uh, Cal Ripken Senior Foundation. Cal Ripken Jr. and his brother Billy uh, honor their dad who died 27 days before my daughter was killed and we have a program for athletes called the Uncommon Athlete and we uh, have worked with Chuck Norris and his wife Gina and they have a middle school program called Kickstart so we do a lot of training for their martial arts experts and uh, then we work with a number of other uh, organizations uh, I feel like when you work together with people you get a lot more done so uh, Rachel's Challenge really is a, a school program uh, that, that reaches just a lot of kids, in a nutshell. I got a, a kind of a silly question for you now, since you said that. Did uh, Chuck Norris teach any moves? <laughs> uh, no, but I got to hear some really interesting stories. We, we flew together on a plane from Dallas to New York, and uh, one of the things we talked about, he was telling me about his mom raising he and his two brothers and they were very poor and they lived in a three-room shack in Oklahoma and he said what about you and I said well I my dad was a minister and we lived in a one-room shack with a light bulb in the center a center block little building and we didn't have any plumbing we had an outdoor toilet and he went you win <laughs> I was the poorest uh, so I know a lot of Chuck Norris jokes but yeah um, I guess the, the other thing I'd say is um, for Rachel's challenge, what what would be, you know, how, how would people that don't know about it, you know, get involved with it, or how, what would you like to see more come out of it, um, as far as well, people can get involved by just going to our website. It's Rachel'sChallenge.org, or they can go to RachelScott.org. Uh, we are a non nonprofit, non religious, non political organization. So one of my favorite stories with Chuck Norris is we flew, he and his wife and I flew from Dallas to New York to host a Fox News show on yeah. Henry and Combs several years ago. And so he had a bodyguard, uh, believe it or not he has a bodyguard because he's older than I am. But he had, uh, his name was Daryl. And so we flew and we landed and we got into our hotel, checked in, and uh, when we went to go to Fox News to do the interview, uh, Daryl was on the wrong floor. So we got in the limousine to go, and Chuck says, where's Daryl? And his wife said, I think he was on the wrong floor. He said, oh, that's okay. So Gina turns to me and says, Daryl, would you pretend to be Chuck's bodyguard when we get to the station? Because people just mob Chuck Norris when he's around. So, uh, so we get out of the car. Sure enough, there's a whole group of people. So his wife and I grab hands, and we take him into the station. And uh, so I said, uh, he said, so Chuck said, well, he said, I apologize for having you do that. I said, you don't need to apologize to me, man. 
I get to tell my grandkids I was Chuck Norris's bodyguard <laughs> for one day. <laughs> uh, so that's my funniest Chuck Norris story about me. So you said uh, Razor's Challenge impacted a lot of different people. Yeah, we. Uh, one of the stories that we share is we were in a school a couple of years ago, and, and uh, our presenter said that the biggest kid in the school was a lineman on the football team, and he came up and talked to him after the assembly, and he was in tears, and he said, I've been the biggest jerk. He didn't use the word jerk, but I won't use the word he used. He said, I've been the biggest jerk in this school for the last four years. I'm a senior. There's only a month left of school, and he said, today for the first time, I realized how much of a jerk I've been. And I really want to apologize. I beat people up. I bully people, push people around. And he said, I don't know what to do to let the school know that I'm sorry. And uh, our speaker had the wisdom to not tell him what to do. He said, just go get quiet and still and come to you. You'll know what you need to do. And so uh, he, the speaker did the training, came back that evening for an evening event with parents and community leaders. And he said, the, uh, the young man, uh, the, the principal almost tackled me in the parking lot. He was so excited. He said, you know the young man you were talking to there at the end of the assembly? He's been our biggest troublemaker ever. But he said, I walked out to greet the bus drivers, the principal did. But he said, the young man was standing there with a sign over his head. He had written the words, I'm sorry. He was walking back and forth in front of the buses, tears streaming down his face. And, uh, and kids were mouthing the words back, we forgive you. And the principal said to our speaker, I never believed in miracles until today. And yeah. today I saw a miracle. And now, is Racial Challenge mostly just in, you know, uh, Colorado, or is it in other states? No, we're in, we're in, uh, we're in all 50 states, and we, we've done things in China and Japan, and uh, Japan just had their premier television station come out a few months ago and did a, an hour-long program uh, featuring Racial Challenge for the whole country. And our speakers go to South America to, we do all the schools in Bermuda, uh, we do schools all over the world. And I'll, I'll actually show you a map that shows about one year, one or two years of activity in schools on the map, little pins all over. So we're in about 2,000 schools a year, every year. Okay. Well, I'm not really sure uh, what else to ask. Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, there is something I want to say. I'm really thankful that my daughter's life touched your life. And it sounds to me like you've started your own chain reactions. Yeah. Because of Rachel's chain reaction. So keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Appreciate that. Yeah. Like I was sharing with them, uh, just sat around our way. You know, I heard the theory that she, that she had of, you know, that the theory, um, it, I don't know it word for word, but just if the love, you know, reached out the challenge, it would start a chain reaction that'll go up the same. And, uh, you know, I just saying to him that it wasn't really a theory, you know, it, it was a fact because around around my way, I seen it as a fact um, with all the different people's lives that changed. And uh, so we just came out here to Colorado to kind of let them know that. And uh, that's about it.